What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna help you to decide if the new Mac Mini M1 worth the upgrade. We will talk about the benefits which comes with the new generation and the issues that you should be aware of before making a purchase decision. Without any further ado, let's get started! Compared to the previous generation, on the outside we have pretty much the same design as its predecessors. Apple has been very consistent with the design of the Mac Mini, which is nice, because it's a very powerful machine inside a very minimalistic block of aluminum. So what is the M1? The M1 is the new processor that is powering the new generation of Macs. Since 2006, Apple has been utilizing Intel processors inside the Mac Minis. That move happened since the second generation, as the first generation was released still with the Apple-developed PowerPC processor. So in 2020, Apple decided to cut ties with Intel and move back to its proprietary processor. The M1 is a completely different architecture when comparing to Intel processors. While the Intel processors are based on the x86 architecture, the M1 is based on the ARM architecture. We don't need to get super technical here, but in high level, it means that the way the processor handles internal commands are completely different, and even application would have to be entirely redeveloped in order to work specifically with the new processors. However, the good news is that Apple did a very good job in making the transition as seamless as possible and totally transparent to the final user, as even applications not yet designed to the M1 can normally run as usual. Well, it's not always so seamless, but I'll get to that when we talk about the issues. Apple became very good in producing efficient processors for the iPhones and the iPads. Year after year, the abionic chips have been providing amazing processing power with amazing energy power consumption. And with all that knowledge that Apple had accumulated when developing iPhone processors over the years, it was a natural move to implement the same type of efficient processors in the Mac lineup as well. The M1 shares a lot of similarities with the A14 Bionic chip, which is powering the latest iPhones in the current generation. They share the same architecture. The M1 is more focused on providing powerful processing power for notebooks and desktops, while the A14 is more focused on the balance that needs to be reached for keeping the good processing power, but with limitations of a small battery which comes with the iPhones. Since the Mac and the iPhone shares the same architecture, it means that we can use iPhone apps in the Macs as well. So why would we do that? Well, I find that usually apps developed for the mobile, specifically for iPhones, tends to be very simple to use, straightforward and very light. And sometimes we just want to open an app and enjoy its contents without having to play around with many options, windows and configurations. Another thing that is very good is the user experience. So if you are used to use an application on iPhone and iPad, you can move to the Mac and that application will behave exactly the same. Now let's talk about performance. The Mac Mini is really fast. The application opens instantly and moving between applications are smooth as in the iPhone and the iPad. Even when editing 4K videos, I have not faced any signs of dropped frames or any slowdown issues. As this is the first generation, I decide to get the base model, to test and to see if it would worth the upgrade. And I have to confess, I regret not having purchased the 16GB of RAM, but we will get into that later on in the video. Don't get me wrong, the 18GB should be totally ok and you will get amazing performance out of this machine. So the 16GB would make a difference for people that use the machine for heavy video editing. I can see in some tests that it can reduce a little bit the timing that takes for rendering and exporting videos. For the day-to-day -day usage and for the regular applications, I wouldn't say that 16GB would make any big difference. The thing to think about is that Apple computers tend to last a very long time until it's time for an upgrade to a new model. So having 16GB of RAM could definitely make this a very long last machine. Keep in mind that in the M1 processors, the memory is integrated in the chip, what Apple calls unified memory. That means that you will not be able to buy additional memory for an upgrade later on. So if you are thinking on buying it and you don't know which version to get, get the 16GB if the budget allows, as you will be able to use this machine for many many years and not even have to think on upgrades. Not everything is amazing in this new generation of Mac Mini M1. As with new fundamental changes to the hardware and software, not always the first generation is 100% stable. I want to share the ongoing issues that I have been facing so far 
so you will be aware and take that into consideration before committing to a purchase. I have been facing a lot of issues with this machine. Sometimes the trackpad just disconnects out of the blue, sometimes the keyboard inputs are facing some legs and become totally unusable. There are some I.O. issues as well, where sometimes I have many devices connected to the ports, some of them stop working and I have to disconnect and connect them again. Thankfully, all the issues are resolved with a reboot of the machine, but it gets really, really frustrating sometimes. So I hope these are all software-related issues and in the upcoming macOS updates all the issues will be eliminated. I have watched some YouTube videos where people are saying that they are not facing these issues with the 16GB variant, although I'm not sure if there is any connection at all with the memory management. It's just something to keep in mind if you decide to go ahead and buy this machine. So here's my conclusion. Is this Mac Mini M1 worth the upgrade? Yes, it does, if you want to enjoy the speedy performance that comes with the new generation of processors. However, keep in mind that there are still some things that Apple needs to resolve. And if you are okay to accept the trade-offs, some occasional issues here and there, in exchange for a performance bump, then this machine is totally worth your consideration. And if by knowing these potential issues, you still decide to go ahead and buy it, the recommendation is try to get the 16GB variant if the budget allows it. This will for sure contribute for the longevity of this machine and also minimize the issues, as most of people are reporting not facing issues with the 16GB variant. So that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Click on that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this and I see you in the next one.